out of Heroes Heart. This is Kyle Ferguson. Today, I get to sit down with Zergling to talk about Gul'dan, the up-and-coming mage that seems to be sneaking into all the drafts recently. This is from NGS Storm Division. We've got Team We Take It Away versus Baby Makers. Uh, this is a last pick for uh, Team Take It Away, Gul'dan. So we got to see most of the other side. Zergling, thank you for joining me. I'm glad to be here. How you doing, Kyle? I'm doing great. I I'm really excited. I this is a this is a draft that keeps being teased in my own NGS games, and and I want to know what's going on with Gul'dan. Why has he become the like the only mage seeing play right now? Uh, I think it's because a lot of the mages right now, other than Leeming, I don't think Leeming's really strong. Um, I think that the uh, overall Gul'dan hero is very good for sustained damage. So he's not a traditional mage. You don't have a Leeming, which is burst, Jaina burst, uh, Kel'thas burst, Kel'thuzad burst. This is a sustained hero. And my team was like, hey, I need some sustained damage to do the immortal. And I'm like, I know the pick, guys. And this is it, it's Gul'dan. Usually you have your traditional auto attack heroes like Greymane, Hanzo, that do it really fast. But Gul'dan is not a bad choice on this map. On yeah, that's another big factor here is we're on Battlefield Eternity. So we're used to Gul'dan's and like Braxus, that that classic, you know, sweet Ariel Gul'dan strategy from 2018. How is he good? He actually burns the Immortal all right? It's, it's not it's not amazing, but it's not bad either. You got to think about it. Gul'dan has very impactful ultimates, and that's one of the things the reason why you draft him, right? Hanzo has a good impactful ultimate, but Greymane's ultimate's like a killing move. So... Thinking about it, and especially with even though it's a two lane map, wave clear is so important. It is so important that being able to go to a sideline and just clearing it really fast with Gul'dan is so beneficial. And then to be able to come back and, you know, do some immortal racing. And as you can see here with our comp, and we have a pretty good draft into what they have, especially since I'm, a, I'm into a Johanna, he can't really threaten me. He can stun me once. So I'm just, I'm just beating up them. I'm beating up their front line. I'm beating up their wall. Does a lot of siege damage. Gul'dan is more, he, he, he could be a win more hero with a lot of siege damage with his E and his Q. So he offers a lot of different options and different play styles. Okay, so you mentioned Johanna here. So we're concerned about Gul'dan's positioning. So probably not into Garrosh's. Garrosh is not bad as long as you're not the one being thrown in. Okay. Um, <laughs> It'd be a little harder into Diablo, I'd say. Any kind of hard engages would be much more difficult for Gul'dan, just like any mage. Any mage is a liability. That's why Li Ming's the most popular one out of all the mages, because she has mobility. Jaina does not. Kel uh, Kel'thas does not. Gul'dan does not. They're, they're very low mobility heroes. But I have Tyrael speed. I have a cleanse from mouth. Um, they don't have much dive. Leo has no CC from the offlane. Johanna can only stun me or falling sword me or, you know, a level 10. You know, none of the ranges can really affect me unless a Hanzo arrow. So there's very little that can stop Gul'dan from draining them. And also very little to lock, kind of lock me down. And allows me to create opportunities for myself to make plays in a team fight. You mentioned the CC that Gul'dan brings later on. If you had had a ETC instead of a Tyrael, maybe an Anduin instead of Malfurion, would Gul'dan have been overkill there or still on the table? Uh, I think it still would have been fine. Um, if he had those, uh, I think anything that slows down a fight for Gul'dan to be able to get his damage off is very beneficial. And as you can see here, I'm clearing the offlane. It yeah. took me two seconds and I pushed that in and look, we're almost close to level seven and you want to hit level seven for the next, uh, team fight. Top lane, Blaze is catching that wave. They're dropping away bottom. My team's three men defending. Right now we're losing the burn, but we're going to win the, the experience level gap and we'll eventually have a level seven to level six fight. And that's one of the advantages of Gul'dan is I can do this as much as I can. And then I can walk away back to bottom and I can just clear another wave. Interesting. So. And you're using your, I mean, you're using all your spells here. Uh, looks yep. like, yep, there's the corruption. And then you're getting some Everything. drain life in to do. Is that just to sustain yourself in case of invade or is the damage actually higher than waiting on the next Q? I have to wait for some of my, I don't, I want to be healthy in case I get ganks. So I'm always using all my spells. So I'm full mana, full health when I come to team fights like this. So I'm full health, full mana. I can tap whenever I need to, and I could drain the immortal to get health back. I don't want to be ganked by a Lunara or something while I'm by myself. That's quite scary. And I think I even get invaded a little bit here, or maybe a different part of the game where I'm just trying to burn. And I end up actually coming over for the defense because we have a seven to six fight here, and we want to fight this. And that was an insane route, and we got a lot of damage. Okay, jumping ahead on talents a little bit. Then is seven a big? 
power spike for Gul'dan, or is it just levels? Uh, that was levels for overall team comp, but it's also great for Gul'dan. That's just slow. This is a talent that I don't... This is a talent build that's not traditionally used, and it's quite different. This is a sieging, uh, kind of... It's kind of a unique 1v1 kind of build. If I was going to 1v1, which you'll see later in this game, you'll see a little 1v1 that I have uh, against the Lunara. Uh, but this build allows me to have good damage with my E, also good for siege damage. My W heals more at level 4. Uh, also, it recharges faster. And then also, my level 7, it slows them for 40%, which is a huge slow. That uh, We don't have a lot of CC. We have a Tyrael, right? So I can slow Johanna if they're running away, slow a target from running away. I can slow someone that's diving someone else. So it allows me to have a lot more utility. And as you can see here, I, I call my slows and we can focus that target. So right there, I'm slowing Lupus. We get the bomb off. We get a nice chunk. And then I have, a, I have my uh, drain back in like a second. So it's like a unique build where I have more single target damage rather than the traditional uh, Q at 7 or people take the E at 7, I believe. Oh no, the healing reduction, that's it. Right? Yes, the healing reduction. You get less healing, and you do more damage. And that's a traditional one, but I like the drain build. Interesting. So, Gul'dan has been changed in a, in a hot while. He got a little bit of a, a horrify buff, but it was back in like 2020 that Gul'dan just straight up baked in, got Curse of Exhaustion with no caveat. Like, you don't have to have corruption on him, it just happens. Yep, and it's great. It's you just click on something and they're slowed and you heal a bunch and the only way they can stop me from slowing someone is to CC me and the only CC they have is Johanna. So, so level four here, there are uh, like a consumed soul was a big Braxis pick back in the day. Improved life tap was yep. really popular when the hero first came out. Do you feel health funnel level four is the main one? I think both are fine. It depends on your play style. I think if there's a lot of waves, you could take it. Um, and I think I like it here because we're fighting all the time and I'm just able to just use it more often. And also, I believe I get more recharge on the Immortal, so I stay up longer. Oh, yeah. And also, Rain of Destruction. <laughs> You're talking about Horrify. <laughs> we forgot about Rain. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is this is the Siege. We are level 10. They are not. Their top four is down. I saw them boss side and I was like, hey, let's, let's Siege their keep. And what's the highest Siege damage in the game? Well, there's two high siege damage ultimates. There's Rainer's Hyperion, and then there's Reign of Destruction, and I took Reign of Destruction. Wow. Um, so originally, looking at the enemy side, you kind of wanted that CC, not exactly planning it, but here, level 10 power spike, they didn't have it. Let's get that heat, why not? Oh yeah, it's just like if you're playing Arthas and you have Cindergosa and you're just like, I'm just gonna take the keep because we're gonna snowball, and that's what we decided to do. And this is a very, very, uh, unique play style because usually Horrify is better and I agree Horrify is one of the most broken ultimates in the game but if you are winning on a snowball map which there's not many snowball maps in the game anymore due to XP changes BOE is one of the fastest maps in the game Braxis and BOE so if you're pushing a structure right and you're winning the map and your mortals pushing you can just drop a rain of vengeance and they cannot clear that mortal because they're going to take so much rain of, of uh, uh, rain of destruction damage on all of their heroes and that's something that I decided to try. So wow. and it's very nice because I can throw my E, press the W, and most of the time with Reign of Destruction, you want to be using it at the start of the team fight rather than later. So you need to do it from out of vision, so like right here I'm from the side, and there's no CC to interrupt my reign. Yeah, I guess I'm not. Little, yeah. Yeah, it's you just you just let it rain, and they're all dead. <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. 70 second cooldown. I isn't this now a shorter cooldown than Horrify? 10 it is. seconds, yeah, but yes. still, that's, that's sneaky seven full seconds of a Reign of Destruction action. Level one here, you got Echoed Corruption. Yep. Now, now you got all these pretty pictures. You got you got all these Drain Life pictures. Why not Chaotic Energy? Uh, that was, that's the globes. You don't get many globes on this map, oh, and okay. I want the E for the 16. So some people with Reign of Destruction take the level 16... Um... When you tap, your next ability power is 25% stronger than you press Rain of Destruction, which is really, really strong. It's a cool build for full drain plus rain. Um, but I really like my E because if you can, it's really cool because if you land your E when you finish your quest, which I'm almost done, I'm at 35 right now. When I finish my quest and at level 16, when I get the E upgrade, I can throw my E onto a target, press my W and slow them, and my E will kill them. 100 to 0. As long as they're not like a thousand, ten thousand HP, you know, Diablo with Soul Shield, I will kill them with this build, one v one. 
challenge me, I will beat you with it. Oh. So that's, that's my goal with this build, is anyone I target, I am killing that person, and it's high single target damage with E, W for the slow, healing myself, and I have range destruction for push. So it's a different playstyle, which I really like Gul'dan, well, because there's so many different playstyles you could do. You can do Q build, W build, E build, or you could do this like hybrid build, which is really good in this scenario, in my opinion. So 13 is a forced survivability level, uh, harvest life, Yep. Go to with the build you've made or, or individual choice yep. per game? I It depends. You can also take the health tap, I think, is really good, too. Um, I personally just like this one with this build because I'm draining all the time and more healing is better for me. I got stunned there. That's the only stun I'm going to get stunned this game. And I'm just draining. Look how much healing I'm getting. I'm just nonstop healing all the time. I'm going to throw some abilities. And here, I'm out of the fight. I'm going to let that rain. I got a kill on Johanna with rain. And I'm sieging their wall as well. It does a lot of siege damage. <laughs> and then this is where I can just walk up. I can throw more Qs on the thing. Anytime a, um, a hero walks up, I'll just press W on them. I'll heal a bunch. I'll slow them. And I have my E whenever. So. All right. So so you're using a lot of game knowledge here. You you mentioned that you know, Johanna's got that mini stun for you. Could interrupt you. Uh, the Hanzo yep. era was already out. So no trouble there with getting off the rain. Is it something in a higher CC enemy comp like people actually notice? Or... Is the yes. animation of Gul'dan putting his hands in the air so rarely seen that no one interrupts it? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's so. It takes so long to get Rain of Destruction off that people will accidentally interrupt it if they have okay. a lot of CC. That's the problem. Uh, high. Usually, we also associated with a lot of higher CC comps. Team fights are a lot faster. Their team comps kind of slower. Mm. So the way I'm playing it is. They want to play slow, right? They have Hanzo poke, Lunara poke, Rhaegar. He's not really aggressive support. He's kind of a reactive support. You have Johanna who can't die. You got a Leo that's looking for an entomb. So I don't really, you know, I don't want to be able to put a rain up when you're fighting really fast. You want to fight slow with rain. And if you want to fight fast, you need Horrify. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm staring at your rain of destruction right now. So in that instance- And it got interrupted. Oh, Actually, yep, I interrupted okay. it myself. I didn't want to use it. Oh, that's a nice trade. Now you can. Yeah, if you double click it, you you can interrupt it. And I decided it was not useful at that point, and we just needed to win the team fight. Yeah. So this really chaotic battle. So obviously, there's kind of the the Asmodan like quality of, or even probably Hyperion being you know uh, spot on. I'm gonna team fight, and there's a building. Win win. Let's all rain of destruction. But mm -hmm. here you're kind of looking at, is there an objective? Like what, what cause, what's going to cause us to actually stick around and make this last the full seven seconds? Yep. And also it's kind of cool too, right? If people are waiting for your rain and they're like, I'm going to interrupt it next time. I'm going to bless, bless shield him. You just press it and then you cancel it yourself. Cancel <laughs> it instantly. You can bait them. You can play mind games with them. There's so much things you could do with it. So the, here, this is the benefit of having uh, the W build. I have a lot of sustain. I'm healing myself up, taking the camp really fast. Like, I, yeah. I could be burning with my team right now, but I want to get core pressure. So I just did that by myself really fast, which a lot of our heroes can do that, but some heroes can't do that as fast. Yeah, and it's so nice to have the sustained. That was the, the the health funnel coming into play. So when an enemy dies, which is just an enemy, doesn't have to be a hero. Ooh, here comes the E. Oh yeah, Lupus is dead. One E, that's all you need. I got slow for the chase. I have my E soon. I'm dropping a rain right here. I have another slow coming up. I think I almost killed Johanna here. I land my E and then I get my W. Leo slow me, no W there. Wow, that's got that nice put on sunglasses quality to it. The the Nazebo, the <laughs> Lunara, just that poison damage getting it off screen. Yeah. So always trying to land that E, and then I use the E there on the core because it does so much damage. Sure. But if you can just land an E on a target and you press W, most of the time your E is going to land. Um, especially if you don't have any lockdown CC. If you have a Garrosh or a Diablo, you don't need to have the slow because you're going to land your spells on top of the CC. But having a tier, you're not allowed to do that. So that's kind of what we did. As I picked this build, and it worked specifically with this team comp and against their team comp. And that's kind of the hybrid build that I did, and it worked out. Wow. Very cool. So, so for first getting into Gul'dan for for newcomers, yep. Should you just like forget about auto attacks? Too dangerous. Focus on spells. Weave them in later. I think I never auto attack on Gul'dan. A any auto attacks that fly are like an accident, a happy accident that may. Have yeah, happened. I don't. I think if you're auto attacking, because your spells are such a short cooldown that you should be kiting where you're running up, throwing a Q, running back, running up, throwing a Q, running back. 
to kind of keep your distance. If you're queuing, auto queuing, you're standing still too long. Mm -hmm. So that's probably my number one tip is you want to stay mobile. Don't try to auto attack. The only time you should ever be immobile is when you're pressing W for drain. And that's one of the reasons why people don't go drain build and get certain comps like high CC because you can't sit there and drain them because they're just going to CC you out of that. And then you don't have no healing. So this build only works against low CC comps like their comp, for example. Um, so I would recommend to players to try to use your Q and kite in and out and don't try to auto. And uh, make sure you press all your buttons. Just make sure you don't go too low because some Gul'dans like to play on that borderline of I'm almost dead. Can you heal me? And sometimes you just got to sustain yourself, you know, understand your resources. Level 20, what would you have gone? Uh, you got this that's flow, a, you know? So level, level 20 is interesting. If you take Horrify, you should always probably take Horrify. Uh, Rain of Destruction upgrade is nice for the slow, but it's not necessarily the best thing in the world. Um, you can go without it, um, especially since you want to use it at the start of the fight. The slow could be very useful. Um, but the uh, Demonic Circle is really, really useful. I think if you're playing Solo Q or Storm League, I would recommend Demonic Circle if you're not Horrify. If you are Horrify, please take the Horrify upgrade. It's way better. Um, but Demonic Circle is really nice because you can place that in your base. You can place that on the side of a team fight. You can place that in a bush nearby. And when you're in danger and they dive you and you're like, oh no, I'm an immobile mage, you blink out. And you're out of the fight and you come right back in. And you re come in and reposition. So if your position is compromised and you are worried about getting one shot and you're immobile mage and you're like, wow, I really wish I had more survivability, you got that teleport. And it's instant. It is instant, which is really nice. There's no channel, nothing. So you just press that when you're like, oh, crap, I'm in danger. So Battlefield of Eternity here, kind of a unique scenario, but actually burned pretty well. Sustained yourself on that since it was a drainable target. Uh, the old Braxis <laughs> Ariel strategy, anywhere else where Gul'dan could kind of be easily plugged in in a Storm League environment. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the uh, BOE is a unique one. He's not, I think, I think also I've seen him before on this map a couple times. Gul'dan's obviously very good on any kind of high, high wave clear maps. So Infernal Shrines, Tomb of the Spider Queen, uh, Braxis Holdout, all those are great options. Very small maps easy to rotate, can clear the waves, because most of the time you pick Gul'dan because the wave clear is sustained damage. Um, and then any of the bigger maps he's okay on, I would say. I think bigger the maps is worse for him because he's so immobile and he's easily picked. But if you take those builds, big maps, you can 1v1 someone, which is great. So maybe you do that. So do some dueling while everyone's split up. Pretty much. And also, you can push buildings really, really fast as Gul'dan. If someone leaves you unchecked in a lane, you'll take an entire fort uh, about as fast or faster than a false dad. Is that with the range destruction in mind, or are you just talking like corruption uh, just hitting the whole no, building? No, just in general. Yeah. If you go, just in general, uh, range destruction obviously speeds that up considerably, but I would definitely, if you're doing that kind of style, I'd recommend Horrify. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for the rundown on the Ghoul Dan. Uh, everybody watching here on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell here at Heroes Hearth, as we're going to have more Learn to Play action and the upcoming season of CCL. Stay tuned.